Oh well, guys, in today's video, I'm solving a lot of the rings jigsaw puzzle. Indeed. And what better place to be and start this video than Hobbington itself. So we're gonna be solving the puzzle and I'm also gonna be showing you the amazing new addition to this uh, Hobbington movie set that has not been seen by anyone yet. So I'm pretty much one of the first people in the entire world to see that. So come with me. Okay, okay, welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in this new jigsaw puzzle adventure. This is, yes, a circular or round Ravensburger jigsaw puzzle produced in the Czech Republic in collaboration with New Line Cinema for The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Some of you may know this already, but I live in around the Devonport area here in New Zealand on the North Shore. It is a beautiful, very green very idyllic neighborhood and I'm so proud of it and there's this place called Resource Recovery Devonport. It is a huge recycling center where you can buy anything from dirt to old furniture to clothing shoes and this is the very moment when I came across those two beautiful Lord of the Rings jigsaw puzzles which I had been actively looking online and I almost got one for almost a hundred dollars days before and these ones were literally one dollar each. You know, Ravensburger is known for great quality. And I can already see that this uh, jigsaw puzzle has so many interesting shapes like that big piece there. And yeah, I'm very happy with it. It is nice and thick. And the good thing about it is that it is opaque, which means, again, that I don't need to lean on the puzzle to complete it. It is not reflective. It is not glossy. I'm very happy with the quality of this jigsaw puzzle overall. Big thumbs up to Ravensburger once again. You know, I'm doing this uh, narration after I finished uh, the puzzle. So all of this was recorded before. And my initial idea was to separate everything by color. So here we have the, the pale colors and then we have the tones of blue. Then we have the orangey, fiery colors. And then a couple of green bits here and there. So far, it all sounds very easy, eh? but you'll see in a minute that this puzzle turned out to be very tricky. But I get one step at a time. Let's have a look at the trays that I got for you today. You know, when I bought this puzzle, I did not realize how subtle the color differences were until I started solving this. And um, I did my best. And what I came up with is I initially separated everything that was very obviously different. But then things started to get a little bit complicated, uh, like all of the browns and the tones of beige and the tones of beige greenish and the tones of greenish with uh, tones of blue. So it was a little bit tricky, but sometimes, for example, here, I would come across some pieces that were very distinctively red or they had some interesting lines on them. And, um, but sadly, most of the trays left me with a strange sour taste of sameness or uniformity. And sometimes, like hardly ever, I would come across pieces that were very distinct, that had this uniqueness to them. And I'm talking about the colors, I'm not even talking about the shapes. But anyway, here is the another good example of uh, uniformity, that is the edges and um, just to make my life a little bit easier here is yet another tray full of pieces that kind of look all the same not talking about the shapes but talking about the colors they all have this weird greenish tone to them and it's all very subtle but hey here's a different tray for you this is Frodo's face and also Frodo's hands and we're gonna see that this is going to be an issue as well in just a minute. So be ready. You know, because this puzzle is round, I thought, you know what? Let's find the very center piece. And I ended up coming across this weird uh, sort of uh, a Shrek looking uh, piece. And it ended up being indeed the very center of this puzzle. So at this stage, I had no idea what the picture was, but it came to me that it was uh, Frodo's lips. Very 
plump lips indeed. And at this part, everything was nice and easy because, uh, you know, because of the shapes of the, uh, the pieces, they were really distinct. And then suddenly things started to get a little bit complicated as I started to go out of that center. Like here, for example, I started to sort of focus on looking for shapes rather than just colors. Sometimes it worked, but sometimes it just didn't work. I had to try pieces many, many, many times to sort of see which uh, of the pieces would fit in the right places. But thank goodness, they were quite unique pieces as well. So there was no way I could, for example, place the wrong piece in the wrong place. They were all very uh, unique in terms of where they would go. But the, the, the biggest problem here for me was having to go through that, you know, the skin or the face that kept on giving. I had one and a half trays full of that color. And trust me, this took me a very long time to complete. And again, some of the things that really saved me were, you know, remember the, um, the Frankenstein shoulder pads, the angel wings, and all those little details or the, the alien head. All of those things really helped me to work through um, Frodo's face and also the hand, as you'll see in a minute. You know, some say that beige is the color of endurance. And I can assure you right now, it did feel like it would never end. And this all changed when I came across a piece that had blue in it. You know, multiple researches suggest that the color blue can be very relaxing. It helps with concentration. And this color could have not arrived at a better time after having spent many and many hours on Frodo's face. Oh, that didn't sound really right. <laughs> and since I was working on blue, uh, which is a very relaxing color that helps with concentration, I decided to focus uh, on small clusters of the same color, if that makes sense because my plan was very different when I started this puzzle. But I actually quite enjoyed the idea of working with clusters. And again, we were talking about joining uh, the big uh, clusters of pieces. And look at this. I suddenly had this realization that this is where the blue pieces would go. And bingo. But now is the moment. I've been saving something really special for this video. And I really hope you enjoy it. Are you ready? Here we go. You know, the Shire or uh, Hobbiton is actually a real place in New Zealand and it's only about two hours away from Auckland and I've been here multiple times. But this time there is something very different happening and I really wanted to show you what has changed since I last visited this place two years ago. This time they have created or recreated a whole hobbit house that had uh, previously just being a dummy door and now we can finally go inside one of the hobbit houses and honestly it does feel like someone really lives there as we'll see in a minute New Zealand winter. Wow, it's funny because the place that made Hobbiton is called Wetter Studios. Yeah. So there, there it is, the Wetter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the workshop, right? I know this uh, new addition to the Hobbit or the Shire has only been open to the public in December 2023 and I am so fortunate to be one of the first people on earth to see it.
You know, in terms of difficulty, I can probably say that doing the green parts for this puzzle was probably the easiest, even though it was not easy per se, it was the easiest part of the puzzle to complete. You know, I'm not entirely sure if I mentioned this before, but one of the things that I really like doing is focusing a lot of my time organizing and reorganizing my trays. But why do I do that? I'm not a speed puzzler, so I spend a lot of time organizing my trays because it gives me a sense of being in control of the puzzle and for me, at least, it is essential that I have them all organized in a way that is easy for me to sort of identify what I have tried, what I have not tried yet. And I'd like turning the, the trays around as I'm looking for specific pieces with specific details on them. And I like looking at, for example, just the right edge of the pieces or just the left edges of the pieces. You know, even though I wanted to stay uh, working on heads and faces and all that, I had to go back to Frodo's hints, which was the very last part of this puzzle. And I finally put a, an image here for you to see how much of the puzzle I have completed so far. And after having uh, spent quite some time inside the new Hobbit uh, house, which was right at the top of the hill somewhere, we were taken back to the valley around the um, the greens, the Green Dragons Inn, which is um, you know showcased in many of the Lord of the Rings movies when they show the part where, with the uh, the Shire and the lake and when they have parties uh, in the Shire and this is that very place. Check out this place and I'm having a ginger beer at the Lord of the Rings movie set. Isn't it cool? Okay guys, I don't want you to be jealous, but inside the Dragon Scene, or just behind it, you can actually have lunch. Of course, this was all part of, a, you know, the tour package. This is what the men's toilet looks like at Hobbiton. Movie set. Which I ended up getting this time, because the previous time I actually had the, um, the feast in the, um, the evening time, which was amazing. We were given, you know, lanterns to walk around the, the Hobbit houses and all that. And uh, one day we're going to talk about this. But that's it for now for uh, the Shire. We're going to have a look at the shop later as a bonus. But now let's continue the puzzle. I'm going to be working on the outskirts of the puzzle towards the edge and towards the frame. And trust me, this was by far the hardest part. And if I didn't have my little secrets again, uh, you know, I'm talking about the little, sh uh, you know, the shapes, 
the diamond heads, the hearts, the, 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 the Frankenstein shoulder pads. And also, as you can see here, there are some lines leading towards the edge. And those lines were essential for me to complete this uh, part of the puzzle. And even though I said before that completing the, uh, the darker parts would be extremely difficult, even though it was kind of difficult, I realized that having those writings going all the way to the edge or the frame were probably intentional. And this brings back the this idea that whoever makes the puzzles, in this case Ravensburger, they know what clues to give us when dealing with very difficult parts of the puzzle. I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but I truly believe that whoever the designer was, they must have thought, hey guys, you know, this part here is gonna be extremely difficult. Let's give them something to work with. And they ended up creating this beautiful uh, writings that go all the way to the, the frame pieces of this puzzle. So completing this part was one, tricky, but not as tricky as I had predicted uh, when I started the puzzle. But anyway, guys, I really uh, hope you enjoyed this video because we are getting towards the very end. But this is not the end yet because we are just about to get to the final piece. And here we go. Okay, guys, uh, in terms of difficulty, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10 for this puzzle. Even though it looked really simple, it is not as easy as it looks. So I'll give it a solid 8. In terms of quality, I can easily say this was a super high quality puzzle. So if you want to buy a similar puzzle, I would highly recommend it. In terms of fun, I would give it literally a 9 out of 10. I had so much fun with this puzzle. Now make sure you check my latest video where I unbox a 6,000 pieces jigsaw puzzle. And also make sure you check this playlist that's on the screen right now with amazing jigsaw puzzles. Bye for now.